When looking at the dorsal side of the turtle, or the back case, you can see its eyes at the anterior end. The eyes have two eyelids, which help protect it from debris. And there's actually a third eyelid at the front end of the eye. It's called the nictating membrane, and it helps moisten and protect the eye. This adaptation allows turtles to dive underwater and still be able to see clearly without injuring their eyes. These are the turtle's nostrils at the front. They're called the external nares, which it uses to breathe. The nares are located toward the top of the head, which allows the turtle to still breathe through its nose, even when in the water. The air goes through the external nares to the internal nares, and then into the trachea and eventually the lungs. Also on the anterior end is the turtle's beak, which you can see right here. Um, turtles don't have teeth, so they use the beak to capture and tear up their food. Here along the side, you can see the tympanic membrane. Amphibians don't have an outer ear, so this membrane acts like an eardrum, separating the inner part of the ear from the environment and transmitting sounds when it detects vibrations. Moving down, you see the turtle's neck, which is shaped like an S in these painted turtles. The shape allows it to pull its head into, the t into its shell to escape predators. Um, you can see the neck's covered in this scaly skin. And the skin makes up the outer layer of the body wall, which protects the organs inside of the coelom. The skin is the main organ in the integumentary system. It's very tough and provi provides protection, um, and also aids in osmoregulation because it keeps water inside of the body. The forelegs are covered in the scaly skin also, and they have claws, which allows the turtles to climb, dig, and move. And then you can move down to the hind legs, which are actually longer than the forelegs. And they're actually shaped kind of like a paddle, which increases water resistance in the water, allowing the turtle to swim. So this is actually an adaptation of animals that live in both terrestrial and aquatic environments. And then toward the posterior end, you can see the muscular post-anal tail, which helps the turtle change directions while swimming. The shell is made up of two parts. There's the carapace on the dorsal side and the plastron on the ventral side. And connecting these two parts of the shells is a bridge. The shell is very hard and provides protection from danger and it can actually act as a calcium reservoir and transfer calcium ions to the shell during periods of hibernation. Both parts of the shells are covered with an epiderm epidermal layer of horny scutes, which are these plate-like structures that you can see. And the pattern of the scutes is unique to each species and helps identify them. Turtles have countershading, which means that its dorsal side is different from the ventral side. And this turtle, the dorsal side is a lot darker, which helps it blend in in its terrestrial environment. And the bottom side, the ventral side, is a lot lighter, which helps it blend in when it's in the water. The most anterior scoot is right here, and it's called the nuchal scoot. And then these are the marginal scutes, which line the carapace. Sorry. These are the costal scutes, and these are the vertebral scutes. On the ventral side, there's six different layers of scutes. The gular, humeral, pectoral, abdominal, femoral, and anal scutes. So on the inside of the carapace, you can see the dermal plate and the vertebra, which forms the spine. The vertebra are fused to the carapace and extend out to form the ribs right here and making up the axial skeleton. This fusion of the vertebra and the ribs creates support and stability for the carapace. There are also many more plates inside such as the peripheral plates which are on the outside, the costal plates again, and the neural plates which are under the vertebra. During respiration, turtles breathe in air through their external nares. The air then goes through their nasal passageway and into the mouth and then their two palatal folds direct the air towards the glottis. The glottis connects the pharynx with the larynx, which then connects to the trachea. The trachea and the larynx are both made of cartilage, and the trachea has this ribbed appearance, and that helps keep it from collapsing. The trachea is ventral to the esophagus, and the air then flows into the two bronchi, and then into the lungs, which are under here, and they're all deflated. Right here is the esophagus and it delivers food to the stomach from the mouth. It is smooth and muscular and it is dorsal to the trachea. This part right here is the stomach and it secretes acidic juices to break down food. The pancreas is up under the liver and is the major gland of the digestive system. 
In turtles, the pancreas has an appearance similar to the mammalian spleen. The pancreas secretes digestive juices into the small intestine that is made of water, electrolytes, and enzymes. The livers are right here, and it metabolizes carbs and fats, which serves as bile pigments and cholesterol. And then this part, past the stomach, starting the small intestine, is called the duodenum and it's the first section of the small intestine. And then coming down here, we have the cloaca. There's the opening from the inside and there's the opening from the outside. And as the opening of the urinary and reproductive systems, it receives waste from the kidneys and fluids from the reproductive or organs and transfers them outside of the body. Here is a closer up of the stomach and all the intestines. And then I wanted to go ahead and cut open the stomach. This right here is the gallbladder. It stores and concentrates bile secreted by the liver and delivers it to the duodenum through the paired bile ducts. It is round and a green structure. This is a turtle's fat body, which it uses to store food during hibernation. This is an uh, amphibian brain, but it's the closest related to a turtle brain. This part up here is called the uh, olfactory lobe, which is respons responsible for smell. Down here is the cerebral hemisphere, which is responsible for vision, touch, smell, voluntary, and voluntary muscle control. And then right here, this is the pituitary body, and it is used in hormone signaling. And then this is the tectum opticum. And then right down here is the cerebellum, and that is responsible for balance and equilibrium. And then down here is the medulla, which is an extension of the spine into the skull. And it is responsible for the um, autonomic activities such as respiration, blood circulation, heart rate, and swallowing. This is a turtle heart. Turtle's hearts are three chambered. It is the left atrium, the right atrium, and the single ventricle. Reptiles possess a hepatic portal system, which supplies blood to the liver by the hepatic portal vein. And then they have the renal portal vein, which supplies blood to the kidneys via the renal arteries. Reptiles also have a double circulatory system, which consists of the systemic circulation and the pulmonary cir uh, circuit. The systemic circuit supplies blood to the body and the pulmonary supplies blood to the lungs. Okay, we're going to talk about the reproductive system of the turtle. This part right here, the opening of the cloaca, and the outside opening of the cloaca are the reproductive tube of the turtle that brings in the sperm and brings out the eggs. And then this back here, these yellow round things are the actual eggs, and we have a female turtle. Turtles are oviparous or egg-laying. Because they lay their eggs on the land, they have amniotic eggs. The amniotic membrane allows gas exchange and keeps the eggs from drying out. The egg and amniotic fluid are all surrounded by a tough but porous shell, which provides protection. Turtles undergo internal fertilization. They're both male and female turtles, and the eggs are fertilized by the male sperm while still inside of the female. Internal fertilization is necessary in species with shelled eggs because the sperm must fertilize the egg before the shell has formed. The vedenephric kidney is the turtle's main organ of the excretory system. Turtles have paired kidneys, so the other one is right against the wall here, and they remove their wastes. Renal arteries and veins transport blood to the kidneys, and then the kidneys remove water and nitrogenous wastes from the blood. Water is often pumped back into the body while the nitrogenous wastes are concentrated into uric acid, which is then removed through the cloaca. You can see the opening here, and then the external opening right in here. The waste is stored in the urinary bladder, which is deflated right here, until it's ready to be excreted through the cloaca.